Our first method for solving initial value problems is known as Euler's method. It's the prototype for everything that follows. Here again is the initial value problem. We want to generate numerical values u1, u2, u3, and so on for the solution at times t1, t2, t3, etc. These values will only be approximate, of course. It's simplest for us to use equally spaced nodes, so we define ti as a plus ih for grid spacing h. Then these nodes stretch uniformly from a to b. Now, the exact ODE has a derivative in it. To approximate that, we can replace the derivative by a forward difference. That's all. We can rearrange this equation to give an explicit formula for ui plus 1 in terms of the value ui. We start out knowing u0, which we use to get u1, which we then use to get u2, and on and on and on. This formula defines Euler's method. Next we discuss the accuracy of Euler's method. Here again is the formula for the method. We're going to generalize this formula by replacing the f with some phi that can depend on t, u, and the grid spacing h. For Euler, we just have phi equaling f. But we will be looking at other methods of this form, which is called a one-step method. Each method has its own definition of phi. Let's say that u hat is the exact solution of the initial value problem. We define a new quantity tau, which is a function of the step index and h, as the result of plugging the exact function into the difference formula that we used to derive the method in the first place. This is called the local truncation error, or LTE. The way we use this is, once we've plugged in the unknown exact solution, we take a Taylor expansion in powers of h, and then we apply the fact that the solution satisfies the ODE. Let's go through this for Euler's method, where phi is just f. The first term in the local truncation error is u hat at ti plus 1. And we expand that around time ti to get a power series in h. From this, we subtract u hat at ti divide it all by h, and then we subtract f from all of that. Here we see u hat prime popping up. Really, the only thing we know about u hat is that it satisfies the ODE, so we'll use that. When you look at everything, that means that it actually is going to cancel out the f term that comes at the end. We also see that the first and last u hat terms cancel each other out in the numerator. What's left is a series starting with h to the first power plus higher order terms. 
the most important thing here is that the leading order of H in tau is first order. This now brings us to the following important theorem from the textbook for all one-step solution methods. Suppose the, local suppose the local truncation error is of order h to the p, and that we have an upper bound on one of the partial derivatives of phi. then the difference between the exact solution and the numerical solution is bounded by h to the p times these other things. The real point of this theorem is that the order of accuracy in the numerical solution is the same as the order of accuracy in tau. That is to say, the order of the local truncation error from taking just one step is the same order as the global error over all the steps. Each time we make a step, we perturb the solution. These don't just accumulate by adding up, like they would in an integral. They also can actually change the trajectory that we take in the ODE solution. But if you look back at our theorem about the conditioning of initial value problems, it said that the effect of perturbing the solution can grow no faster than e to the L times t minus a. So the convergence theorem here takes advantage of that same idea to show that essentially nothing worse than that can happen in this case either. So here's an initial value problem I'm going to use to demonstrate Euler's method. As always, I have to define this function f, that is what u prime equals, it's a function of t and u. I have to define the time interval a to b, and the initial value, which is negative 1 here. This is not an easy problem to solve exactly. So what I'll do is I'll let MATLAB give me a solution that's very, very accurate that I'll consider to be exact. I'm going to use, instead of ODE 45, I'll use ODE 113, which is a little better when you want very, very accurate solutions. And you notice how I had to create this special options structure to tell it what accuracy I wanted. With one output, uh, I have the structure form of the solution, so I have to wrap that inside deval, and what I get here is just a callable function for the solution, which now I plot over the interval. So this is my stand-in for the exact solution. All right, so here I'm going to call the books function for Euler's equation for Euler's method. It has the same inputs and outputs as the MATLAB functions, except it has an additional input, which is the number of steps to take. So because we took 20 steps, there are 21 values of time and 21 values of the solution, starting from time zero. And then we plot that together with the exact solution. It's not so good, right, especially for a while here. If we want to make it more accurate, we use more steps, which is a smaller step size, which makes all the finite differences more accurate. So now you see the yellow circles are much closer to the solution than the original one that we had. So now to be more quantitative about that, I'm going to choose a bunch of different values of n. I'm going to let n keep doubling, in fact. For each of those values of n, I'll call the Euler method. And then I'll keep track of the error. I'm taking the max norm error, so the difference between the exact solution at the t values and the one the t the uh, solution values that I got there. 
And as we double n each time, you can see we are practically cutting the error in half each time. That's what you get with first order convergence. Or we can plot the convergence on a log log scale. First order is this perfect straight line, or perfect, uh, yes, yeah, straight line, the dashed line. And then these are the observed errors which follow that very closely.